My job is to say something very unpleasant. Some of you will not like me for it, they'll be offended. I do apologize to you for that. My job is to look inwards, not outwards. Focus inwards. And if we have problems, what is our role? Where have we missed? The first one is our identity. Many of us lack, this is my contention, many of us lack proper knowledge of our own faith and culture. Many of us lack pride in our heritage and cultural roots and in our identity. Many have not been given some scars by their parents. And many have not received, could not receive formal religious education in the educational institutions. And you know that. That's the Bardesh for us. And many are being now told, it's come to that, that being religious means being backward. No wonder our youngsters are not interested in religion. While we are being exposed to a very whitewashed and glorified version of other religions, we are subject to an indoctrination that's misleading. And this is why I do apologize. We're being told, Sarva Dharma Samabhava. Where did that come from? Which Shruti says that? There is only one Dharma. A, dar a, a religion which says, cut off the heads of people who are not of your faith, take their women and abuse them <coughs> and convert them. How can, is that a religion? How can we say all religions are same? Absolute rubbish. In Bhagavad Gita, in the last chapter, it says, Sarva Dharma Dharma Patijaya, but what he, Sri Krishna, was saying in relation to Jnana Yoga, there were various marks. Those he was referring to as Dharmas. As far as Dharmas is concerned, there is only one, and he was saying, go through bhakti mark to reach me. That's what he meant by that. The next one is actually from Shruti, and it's a very mo the most, one of the most important sayings. It says, ekam sad vipraha bahudha vadanti. But what does sad mean? Sad means the truth that is there. And our spokespersons translated immediately every religion in the world. Those religions that seek to destroy us they would have been called rakshasas in the olden days. They can't be called followers of truth, but I'll come to that in a minute. Our children grow up and marry, and this is where speaking on behalf of Rupaji, who is not here, unfortunately. When it comes to marriage, many marry increasingly people of other faiths. There's a romantic vision of that popularized by Bollywood. Oh yeah, you have the Khans, you have everybody else marrying, and what is the problem? They lived heavily ever after. But if you read in the internet the stories of the travails, the misfortunes that the girls from our Samaj undergo after they have been con married, converted, and abused, then they come to know about it, but it's too late. The problem it cannot be ignored because it is a large-scale problem. Yesterday in the news we read about 50,000 conversions in one year is the state of Maharashtra, at least in parts of that, as news. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's not just in this country, it's global. You read about it in the United States, you read about it in, the, uh, in Canada and United Kingdom and so on. And it cannot be ignored. So what's the problem? I think the first one is going back to square one. Reiterate to our youth that you do so mostly from ignorance of your own identity? Do you realize that you will lose the most precious, the most priceless freedom of speech, thought, and expression that your heritage has given you? That you can even question your own spiritual leaders, you can even question your own tenets, because that's what your shastras tell you to do. But do go and convert and find out how much freedom you are left with. So when you are going to marry, two questions to be asked. The first one is, does this marriage, is it going to involve my conversion to another faith? And secondly, when we have children, what religion are they going to follow? Ask these two questions and then enter into a marriage. On the religious scene, I would put to you that there's a chasm, an unbridgeable chasm between those who claim they are the sole mono, mo monopolist holders of the divine real truth 
what has been mentioned before, claiming that all other practices are false, and, and therefore you, I, need to be converted because they are true, we are false. They'll go to heaven, we'll go to hell. Those who, and, they, and this chasm between such people and those of us who practice dharma, whichever religion that may mean, universalist in outlook, spiritualist, pluralistic, and inclusivists, who base their intellectual outlook ex essentially largely on spiritualism rather than on ritualism, rather than on dogma and hierarchy. Our response to them, in our life, in our interaction with these people of other faiths, we need to have a proper knowledge of our own faith, otherwise we will not be able to engage in a debate with them. If you want to be a Bodhi Kshatriya, be one, otherwise you will be on the run from them because they have sophisticated their uh, debating skills and uh, ability to mis misinterpret and manipulate to a fantastic level. You need to be social activists. Seek and implement legislation. Seek legislation and then implement it in order to protect our samaj from proselytization. It's not enough to leave it to individuals. In, and in terms of the human rights, you had some of you probably uh, attended the session this morning. It's extremely important, that issue. We have to assert, and this is the point, if you read the Constitution of India, the Christian minority, a minuscule minority at that time, persuaded the, those who wrote the Constitution to put in the right to proselytize, and that's the one that we cannot accept. We have to assert that one cannot have the right to proselytize people of other faiths because that constitutes an assault on the human rights of the subject. If I seek to proselytize so that you convert to my religion, well, I am attacking the, your human right, which means that you have the basic human right of believing and practicing. And this is something that needs to be said as loudly as possible. In terms of the media mischief stand up to this negative stereotyping of Hinduism. They don't go to the West. We, do, we see it there, and I'm not surprised. When I come here, I'm appalled. I'm appalled how the media here behaves because we are asleep, because we take it for granted. We watch serials and allow our children to learn all the bad things. So the negative stereotyping of the Hindus, vilification and demonization of our faith and culture, and vilification of any one of us who seeks to protect Dharma and their selected, selectively vilified. And you have people in the garbs of NGOs doing that as well. Coming back to Francois, I say history. Hindus have been the victims of persecution and of genocide over the last millennium and a half. And they continue to do so as we speak. There are two issues here. I'm just uh, only referring to them in brief. The first one is the genocide bit. The Jewish Holocaust happened during the Second World War, and everybody knows about it, everybody remembers it, there is a remembrance of it. Thanks to the Jewish community for having made sure that happens, because even now there are people who deny Holocaust happened, when there is every evidence it happened. And what about us? We have the Armenians and the Turkish, and a genocide in which a couple of million people of Ar Armenian origin were massacred. And it is not accepted that this happened. On the other hand, we have the Crusades. And the Muslims forced the Pope to come and apologize publicly. So if it is all right to apologize for historical wrongs, why is it that they cannot acknowledge, come to terms with the fact that what they have done here in, if you read the WikiLeaks and the communication between the Dhaka US High Commission and the United States government, you will come to know, and there are other sources to believe, that 4.6 4 million Hindus were massacred. These were mostly Muslims, apart from the atrocities committed on the women and their honor. 4.6 million, easy for me to say that. Think of that. 
And what did we in India do? I was at that time a young man reading uh, the broadsheet papers, the Masca Harans reports, and nowhere was it mentioned that it was the Hindus who were being massacred like sheep. We haven't done anything about it. They are being massacred today, and as Francois has said, as we heard in the Human Rights Conference yes, this morning, temples are being destroyed and people are being converted, the lands are being appropriated. What does our government here do about it? And I think it's for us to take them to task and say, if this is a Hindu majority country, if Hindus of this Desh cannot come to the rescue of Hindus anywhere else, who can? In conclusion then, um, I, I look at a slightly positive you know, sunrise out there on the horizon. Because of the pressure put on by activists like Conrad, by Francois, and many others of our Samaj as well, of late there's been a gradual, albeit a very, very grudging transition from the time of persecution and discrimination and intolerance towards equality in law in some countries, not in all countries, and a degree of tolerance, a degree of tolerance. But we are far away from the time where we dem wh what we demand should happen, that is genuine respect for us and an equality that they give to themselves. In our role as Bodhik Kshatriyas, we need to be assertive, we need to be uncompromising, and we need to make our case very politely, very decently, but without giving any space. I would like that this message be given to anybody else as well that you come in contact with. If I have hurt any of your feelings in what I said, I do apologize.